Hey everyone, today I will be talking about the new Netflix series by Marvel, Luke Cage. I will be giving my spoiler-free thoughts and I'll also talk about some ideas it brings up. Luke Cage is about a man who's wrongfully imprisoned, some shit goes down in the prison and he gains super strength and super toughness, he's invulnerable to most bullets and blood force trauma. Mike Coulter plays our titular character, he's just perfect in this role and as a human being he's tall, muscular, and his voice sounds so deep and commanding, you just feel like you can trust him or you'd feel safe in his arms. This is a very fun and very stylish film. I actually didn't like it that much when I was watching the first episode because it seemed like Marvel thought, hey, let's make another superhero show. Let's keep the core parts the same, but we'll give it a new skin. We'll put it in a new location. How about Harlem? A few episodes in, I realized, yes, yeah, some of my assumptions were correct. It is the classic hero's journey, but it's not just a new skin. It's the hero's journey in a completely new body. This film reminded me of how impactful the film medium can be, and I will talk more about a specific detail at the end of my review. Luke Cage, when he gets out, he just wants to be left alone. He wants to live a quiet life, but he's forced to fight when the moral decay of Harlem, facilitated by gangs and criminal organizations, affect him personally. And he has to fight for the city, fight to clear his name, and also fight the demons of his past. Based on some interviews I've watched with the actor that plays Luke Cage, the creator and showrunner Keo Hidari Coker was very involved and it shows because there's a very focused vision. This show is not watered down, it is completely steeped in black culture. You can see it in the soulful jazz tunes they play at the club. Some of the best scenes are when we're cutting between these beautiful songs and something terrible that's happening. But of course the song is relevant to what's happening and it's back and forth and it just looks really cool. We see the culture and the conversations they have about sports with one another in the communal locations that people choose to hang out with. It seems like a really authentic representation of the black community and that of Harlem. And that's all in addition to the story, which is about a man wrongly incarcerated. And that's a problem for any race, but especially African Americans. May Hershela Ali plays Cornell Cottonmouth Stokes, the criminal kingpin who also runs the very popular nightclub called Harlem's Paradise. You'll recognize this face because he plays Remy in House of Cards and he carries that badassness into this show. He works closely with his cousin Mariah Dillard who's a local councilwoman and she's not a criminal but she isn't afraid to do what she needs to do to get ahead. Other characters include Shades, the quiet cool right hand man that always wears glasses and there's another person that comes up called Diamondback who we don't know what his story is. What I really really like about the show is that every single character is given a well-developed backstory. If you've seen Daredevil, the Kingpin was an amazing character because we really got to know him. In Luke Cage, we really get to know the backstory of a lot of characters. Mariah, Cottonmouth, Diamondback, Misty, they are all given a proper amount of time to really understand them and understand their motivations. We see how they are, why they are, and how they change. Even Shades, who just seems like a side character, is given a handful of scenes that just let us see who he is a little bit more, and that just makes him seem a lot cooler. There are also so many interesting and strong woman characters in this show, both as protagonists and antagonists. Rosario Dawson returns as Claire Temple, who's the nurse in Daredevil. I feel like I've already seen a lot of her, but she's still fine in this, and fine in all the definitions. A new female character we do have is Misty, played by Simone Missick, and she's an NYPD detective. This is a really cool character because one, she's very beautiful, but also two, she's very capable. Like most shows, there is some attraction between her as the primary female protagonist and Luke Cage, but they get past that very quick and it's all about how do we solve these issues we're facing. And finally, Maria Dillard, which I talked briefly about before, played by Alfred Woodard. Easily one of the most complex and interesting and fun to watch characters of the show. Did anyone see Suicide Squad? If you did, I'm sorry. What did you guys think of Amanda Waller? Well, watch this and Suicide Squad and then tell me who you'd rather hang out with. With all these characters and still under the Marvel banner, the show still managed to surprise me, especially in the arcs of certain characters. I think this show builds a lot of momentum after the halfway point, after certain things are revealed. So I can't really talk about Luke Cage without talking about what this show really is. This show stars mostly black people and it's not about diversity, it's actually about the African American experience. It could have only been told with African American people working in it. It shows us multiple sides of the struggle they face, including police brutality and wrongful convictions, but it also brings up the responsibilities the individuals have to their community and even the words they choose to use when addressing each other. It does so with incredible confidence and style and this should be applauded. Some criticisms have been this show is 
is too black or they use the n-word too much or why does it have to bring up such serious issues can't we just have a fun show about luke cage and to that i say i get it it's uncomfortable to watch and to talk about a lot of these issues sometimes but that's the beauty of Netflix. We can not have auteurs like Coker to come in and give us a real perspective that isn't watered down by a bunch of executives or isn't meant to appeal to the general population. If we can squeeze important social issues within a very entertaining package, then I think more power to them. At the end of the day, it's still a Marvel show and its main goal is to entertain. And I think it succeeds. Cons. The fight choreography is pretty weak. Granted, he does have super strength, so he doesn't really need to know how to fight. I think he just kind of smacks people around and they just go flying. The effects of people flying away or going into the walls look kind of fake at times, and I just wish they added some more interesting choreography. I also thought the beginning was a bit predictable, but it really did pick up steam in the middle. I'm going to give Luke Cage an A-. So that was my spoiler free review. I want to talk briefly about one part of the show that I think deserves a conversation. It's not really a spoiler, but I would recommend you watch the show first before watching this part of the video. Wearing hoodies are cool again. It really blew my mind when I realized what they were doing with the hoodie. After the tragedy with Trayvon Martin, hoodies were being demonized. It was a symbol of crime or thuggishness or what was wrong with youth culture. It just had so many negative vibes and this show took it back and made it a symbol of strength. When Luke Cage pulls on his hoodie, his anonymity isn't a representation of lawlessness. It actually reminds us that true heroism doesn't need recognition. Anyone can put on that hood and be a hero and then we see everyone else else in the city put it on and wearing it in solidarity. When all the hoodies are covered in bullet holes, I felt like that was a little bit too on the nose, but I understand they wanted to make a point. This series reminds me that what we see actually does have an effect because while I'm not against hoodies, after what happened though, I did start wearing them a lot less just cause there's a small part of that that got to me. I just didn't want to feel or be associated with those negative feelings. And after watching this, I totally feel badass wearing a hoodie. I just, I feel like Luke Cage, a proud black man who's a force for good. I think this is a very important show and I look forward to the day that people of all backgrounds have a hero they can look up to and feel represented by. This world is created by Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan, who is the brother of Christopher Nolan. And it's also executive produced by JJ Abrams.